And I went into church, and here I saw uh, the Sacred Heart. It was black except the Sacred Heart, and there was a, a candle in front of the Sacred Heart. Well, I prayed, and then I started walking home, three miles to home, and it was dark out. But the snow was coming down very softly, and then I felt the presence of the Lord, and I felt that he wanted me to do this. I was 18. I wanted to be a missionary, and I talked to Sister Otilia, and she it was the first year they had Selma, Alabama, and she said, well, we are missionaries. We got Selma, Alabama now. <laughs> oh, dear, that's like a little speck, you know. <laughs> but anyway, I had to wait 25 years before I got to go to Selma. I was there for the marches. We couldn't march because the bishop would oust us if we had anything to do with the marches. But we went over at supper, and we would help them uh, serve supper and take care of the marchers. Uh, the marchers would stay in the, the Samaritan Hospital. That was the colored hospital. And they, they had mattresses in the hall. They'd be lying on the mattresses and sleeping. But they would be served supper there. Oh, I taught. I love the little children and their innocent little eyes. And the way they looked at you, oh, they are precious. I had the first and second grade, and oh, they were so cute and so docile. But you had to start with the elementary things, how to wash your hands, everything. They didn't know a bathroom when they saw it. And when I was in Brockport, I had third and fourth. An older sister came, and she wanted third and fourth. I had to go down to first and second. I had never had first. I was scared. Well, when I got down there, <laughs> the little kids couldn't even hold a pencil. They had never had kindergarten. And I had to start with that, how to put a pencil in their hand, how to make little sticks. They were darling, though. I just loved them. Uh, and then there were some songs that I loved to sing with them. Well, don't do t don't ask the me to sing. Do that one with the, the soldiers. Oh, the toy shop door is locked up tight and everything <laughs> is quiet for the night. And suddenly the clock strikes twelve. The fun's begun. The towels are in their best array. There's going to be a wonderful parade. Harken to the drum. Oh, here they come. Cried free. One, hear them all cheering, now they are nearing theirs. The captain's stiffest arch, bayonets flashing, music is crashing as the music. Uh, uh, here they come, here they come, here they come, here they come. <laughs> Wooden soldiers on parade. <laughs> I started quilting when I was in Auburn, and that was in the 70s. And we went to Aurora. There's a little place next to Auburn, and uh, the Mo Mormon women ran a, a shop there, and so we took lessons there. The lessons that we had weren't much. You know, they didn't stick with us. When I feature a person taking a lesson, you're sticking with them, and you're going uh, bit by bit, you know, uh, so that they can understand what they're doing. If you ever say to Dorothy Quinn, I think I'd like to make a quilt, <laughs> you're in. Because because she doesn't let you let go of that. That's the thing, and she stays with you like she did with you. You know, yeah, find absolutely. the pattern, find the fabric, wash the fabric, iron the fabric. You know, the thing about making a quilt. I wanted to do it. I wanted to learn, and I'm so glad that I have. I thought I'd be tense, and you know, like. Ugh. Um, it's the most relaxing, prayerful experience I think I've ever had. So it's a wonderful gift to me that she has given. And her gift to me is joy, absolute joy. We help one another. I love to go to the library. That's my second home. And I have a puzzle in there. And guess who puts the rim around every time? <laughs> oh, yeah. That one. She puts the rim around because I can't quite make it. <laughs> I like togetherness. Um, I love praying with people, and we have more fun just praying together. Oh, that's, that's a joy for me.